The Danish North Sea Empire, also known as the Anglo-Scandinavian Empire, was the Thalassocratic domain ruled by Canute the Great as King of England, Denmark, Norway and parts of what is now Sweden between 1016 and 1035. Formation England Canute was the younger son of the Danish king Swain Forkbeard. When his father died on 3 February 1014 during an invasion of England, Canute, who had been left in command of the fleet in the River Trent while Swain was in the south of England, was acclaimed by the Danes. However, the invasion fell apart, the men of the Kingdom of Lindsay, who had promised to supply horses for a tactical raid, were not ready before the English nobles had reinstalled King Ethelred, whom they had previously sent into exile. After forcing him to agree to govern less harshly, Canute's brother Harold became King of Denmark, but with help from Eric Hackinson of Norway, Canute raised a new invasion fleet of his own and returned to England in summer 1015. The English were divided by intrigue among the king, his sons, and other nobles. Within four months, one of Ethelred's sons had pledged allegiance to Canute and he controlled Wessex, the historic heart of the kingdom. Before the decisive battle for London could be fought, Ethelred died on 23 April 1016. The Londoners chose his son Edmund as their king, while most of the nobles met at Southampton and swore fealty to Canute. Canute blockaded London, but was forced to leave to replenish his supplies and beaten by Edmund at the Battle of Otford. However, following the Danes as they raided into Essex, Edmund was in turn defeated at the Battle of Assandon. He and Canute struck an agreement under which Edmund would retain Wessex and Canute rule all of England north of the Thames. But on 30 November 1016, Edmund in turn died, leaving Canute as King of England. In summer 1017, he cemented his power by marrying Ethelred's widow, Emma, although he had previously married an English noblewoman, Elfgifu of Northampton. In 1018, he paid off his fleet with money especially from the citizens of London and was fully recognised as King of England. <laughs> Denmark King Harold died childless in 1018 or 1019, leaving the country without a king. Canute was his brother's heir and went to Denmark in 1019 to claim it. While there he sent his subjects in England a letter saying he was abroad to avert an unspecified danger, and he only returned to quell incipient rebellions. One Danish chronicle states that the Danes had previously deposed Harold in favour of Canute, then brought back Harold because of Canute's frequent absences, until Canute finally became king permanently after his brother's death. King Olaf of Norway and King Annan Jacob of Sweden, seeing the combined Anglo Danish kingdom as a threat, Canute's father Swain had asserted power over both their countries, took advantage of Canute's being in England to attack Denmark in 1025 or 1026, and were joined by Ulf Jarl, Canute's Danish regent, and his brother. Canute took Olaf's fleet by surprise and took the battle to the Swedish fleet at the Battle of the Helgi. The precise outcome is disputed, but Canute came out best. Olaf fled and the threat to Denmark was dispelled. In 1027, Canute travelled to Rome, partly to expiate his sin for having Jarl Ulf killed the previous Christmas, partly to attend the coronation of Conrad II as Holy Roman Emperor and to demonstrate his importance as a ruler. He secured relaxation of tolls levied on pilgrims journeying to Rome from northern Europe, and on papal fees for English archbishops receiving their pallium. He also began a relationship with Conrad that led to the emperor's son Henry marrying Canute's daughter Gunhild and before that to the emperor ceding to Denmark Schleswig and a strip of ancient Danish territory between Hedeby and the Eider that the Germans had occupied as a buffer zone against the Danes. Norway. Olaf II had extended his power throughout Norway while Jarl Eric was with Canute in England. Canute's enmity with him extended further back. Ethelred had returned to England in a fleet provided by Olaf. In 1024, Canute had offered to let Olaf govern Norway as his vassal, but after Helgi, he set about undermining his unpopular rule with bribes, and in 1028 set out with 50 ships to subjugate Norway. A large contingent of Danish ships joined him, and Olaf withdrew into the Oslo fjord while Canute sailed along the coast, landing at various points and receiving oaths of allegiance from the local chieftains. Finally at Nidaros, now Trondheim, he was acclaimed king at the Erathing, and in a few months Olaf fled to Sweden. In 1030, Olaf attempted to return, but the people of the Trondheim area did not want him back and he was defeated and killed at the Battle of Sticklestad. 
Topic: Sweden. After Helgi, Knut also claimed to rule part of Sweden, together with England, Denmark, and Norway. He had coins minted either in the capital, Sigtuna, or in Lund, then part of Denmark, with the inscription CNVT Rex SW, Knut King of the Swedes. Western Gotaland or Blekanja have been suggested. Most England runestones are in Upland. It was probably either overlordship or disputed rule. Knut did not have to be present in Sweden to order the minting of coins. Coins were also minted asserting he ruled Ireland, and Swedish history at this early date is very uncertain. Topic: <inaudible> Tributary areas. In addition to Sweden, of which he or the person who wrote the heading to his letter claimed he was king, Knut received tribute from the Wends and was allied with the Poles. In 1022, together with Godwin and Ulf Jarl, he took a fleet east into the Baltic to confirm his overlordship of the coastal areas that the Danish kings dominated from the Jomsborg. Immediately after his return from Rome, Knut led an army into Scotland and made vassals of Malcolm, the High King of Scotland, and two other kings, one of whom, Ekmerkosh Mac Ragnail, was a sea king whose lands included included Galloway and the Isle of Man and would become King of Dublin in 1036. All these and likely also the Welsh paid tribute, on the model of the Danegeld that Ethelred had instituted to pay off the Danes, and Canute was thus reasserting the dominion over the Celtic kingdoms that recent English kings had had to let lapse, as well as punishing those who had supported Olaf against him. A verse by the Icelandic skald Ater Svarti calls Canute, King of the Danes, the Irish, the English and the Islanders. Presumably Norway is omitted because Canute had not yet come to power there. Religion By the early 11th century, England had been Christian for centuries, the Dane law was in transition from paganism to Christianity, but the Scandinavian countries were still predominantly pagan. Canute's father, Swain, had initially been pagan but in later life had been basically Christian. In England, Canute assiduously promoted the interests of the Church, and this brought him acceptance from the Christian rulers of Europe that no other Scandinavian king had previously been accorded. In Norway, in contrast, he built churches and was both respectful and generous to the clergy, but also made allies of the heathen chieftains, and unlike Olaf, did not make laws benefiting the Church until his power was on a solid footing. Governance. <inaudible> <inaudible> Early in 1017, probably because he was king by right of conquest not more normal means, Canute divided England into four earldoms on the Scandinavian model, Wessex he governed directly, and of his allies Thorkel the Tall became Earl of East Anglia, Eric Hackinson retained Northumbria, which Canute had already given him, and Edric Striona became Earl of Mercia. But the last was disgraced and executed within a year. In 1018 Canute revived at least two earldoms in Wessex and at a meeting at Oxford, his followers and representatives of the English agreed that he would govern under the laws of King Edgar. Anglo-Saxon historian Frank Stenton points out that the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle has relatively little to say about Canute's reign except to note his frequent travels abroad, indicating that he was in strong control of England. Thorkel likely acted as his regent during his absences, until they had a falling out and he was outlawed in 1021. The terms of their reconciliation in Denmark in 1023, with an exchange of sons for Fosterage and Thorkel becoming Canute's regent in Denmark, suggests that Thorkel had won them with an armed force. However, it was left to another of Canute's earls, Seward, to protect his earldom of Northumbria by consolidating English power in Scotland. At his death in 1055, he, not the king, was overlord of all the territory that the Kingdom of Strathclyde had annexed early the previous century. The Danes had more reason to grumble about Canute's absences than the English. He reigned primarily from England, leaving regents in charge in Denmark. He replaced Thorkel as his primary advisor in England with Godwin, an Englishman whom he made Earl of Wessex, while within three years of their reconciliation he had also been replaced as regent of Denmark, by Ulf Jarl, Canute's sister's husband, whom Canute also made guardian of his son by Emma, Hartha Canute. Ulf in turn proved less than loyal, first conspiring against him with the kings of Sweden and Norway, then making a power play by having the nobles swear fealty to Hartha Canute, thus effectively to him. Canute returned to Denmark at Christmas 1026, ordered his housecarls to kill Ulf, and it was done in Trinity Church at Roskilde. 
By the end of his life, he had entirely replaced the Scandinavian inner circle who advised him with Englishmen. In Norway, Knut stayed into the new year and then left Jarl Eric's son Hakon in charge as his regent. He had served Swain Forkbeard in the same capacity, but he drowned the following winter. As his replacement, Knut sent Swine, the younger of his two sons by Elfgifu and thus known as Sveen Alfifusen in Norway, along with his mother as guardian. They were delayed in southern Norway while Olaf's return was rebuffed, but became even more unpopular than he had been. Elfgifu tried to impose new taxation and stricter controls on a people who valued their independence and especially resented that the new customs were Danish. Knut also prepared to hand over Denmark to one of his sons. Upon taking power in Norway, he held a great court in Nidaros and proclaimed Hartha Knut, his son by Emma, king of Denmark. As Stenton points out, by appointing different sons his heirs in different countries, he demonstrated that he did not have the deliberate intention of founding a northern empire, which would remain united after his death. It may have been simply the custom of his people. In any event, it was clear throughout Canute's reign that the weakness of his empire lay in the impossibility of finding loyal and competent regents to govern when he could not be present. And his sons could not hold it together. Topic. After Canute's death The North Sea Empire collapsed immediately once Canute died in 1035. In fact in Norway it was already collapsing, by the winter of 1033, Swine and Elfgifu were so unpopular that they were forced to leave Trondheim. In 1034 the leader of the army that had rebuffed and killed King Olaf at Sticklisted went together with one of the king's loyal followers to bring his young son Magnus back from Gardariki to rule, and in autumn 1035, a few weeks before Canute's death, Swine and his mother had to flee the country altogether and go to Denmark. Swine died shortly afterwards. In Denmark, Hartha Canute was already ruling as king, but he was unable to leave for three years because of the threat that Magnus of Norway would invade to exact revenge. In the meantime the English nobles, divided between him and Canute's younger son by Elfgifu, Harold Harefoot, decided to compromise by having Harold rule as regent, and by the end of 1037 Elfgifu had persuaded the most important to swear allegiance to Harold, he was firmly ensconced as Harold I, and Harthaknut's own mother, Queen Emma, had been forced to take refuge in Flanders. Harthaknut prepared an invasion fleet to wrest England from his half-brother, but the latter died in 1040 before it could be used. Hartha Canute then became king of England, reuniting it with Denmark, but made a generally bad impression as king. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle said of him that he never did anything royal during his entire reign. He died suddenly in June 1042, as he stood at his drink, at a wedding feast, and with him died the North Sea Empire. Topic. See also List of English monarchs List of Danish monarchs List of Norwegian monarchs List of Swedish monarchs List of possessions of Norway Norse activity in the British Isles Viking expansion Footnotes References <references> <references>